to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to WTF on a well-designed business. That's right, it's Window Treatment Friday. And before I start the show, I have a big shout-out and some pretty big news for you. First, the shout-out. Today's show is brought to you by our newest sponsor, Kirsch. Kirsch debuted on the show just last week. I had a great discussion with Matt Johnson, the national sales manager of Kirsch Drapery Hardware, and Sarah Frost, the brand manager for Kirsch Drapery Hardware. Please check out that show if you missed it. It's episode number 479. On that episode, we learned how the Kirsch team is on a mission to breathe new life into this 100-year-plus-old company. New product introductions and revamps of existing lines like the Buckingham Collection, which is their hand-painted, hand-finished line of wood drapery hardware that happens to be manufactured right in High Point, North Carolina. To learn more about all of these products that Kirsch offers, go to Kirsch dot com k i r s c h dot com and you'll be able to find a distributor in your area now the big news. If you have been loving the WTF shows and you want to learn more about window treatments so that you can add this very profitable revenue stream to your interior design business, Vita and I have the answer for you. In January, Vita is going to be teaching an eight-week course, Profit with window treatments. This course will meet via Zoom, so you can be anywhere in the world. You can join in real time live with Vita and your other colleagues in the course, or you can watch the replay at your convenience. All the magic will be there for you to soak it in. We will run this in conjunction with a private Facebook group for support and extra time and questions. I will be popping in, certainly at the very beginning of the first class, I'll be there and I'll be joining you for the last class too, but I'll also be in the Facebook group for the discussions throughout the eight weeks. Vita and I know firsthand how profitable window treatments are, and we want to share with you our knowledge and experience so that you too can have the confidence and the expertise that you need in order to profit with window treatments. We will be opening the course in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to be notified when it is open, don't hesitate right now. Please go to ProfitWithWindowTreatments.com. All right? ProfitWithWindowTreatments.com. What will happen is you will give us your email address. And then when we officially open the course in the next couple of weeks, you will be one of the first ones to get this fantastic opportunity emailed right to you. All right? So there's no obligation at this point. This is just getting on the list so that you know when I open the doors. Okay? Okay. I know that we often talk about how the design schools really don't take the time and have the time to teach you the business side of design. But really, where do you even go to learn window treatments, right? There's hardly college for window treatments. But when you put people together like Vita and myself that I don't even want to tell you how many years together experience we have, but it's over 50, okay, um, at least I know that you'll be well-taught and well-versed if you take the course with us, okay? So now you have a place to learn window treatment so that you can add more money to your revenue this year in 2020, all right? Sign up at ProfitWithWindowTreatments.com. All right, let's get to today's show. We're talking about hard and soft treatments. Hi, Vita. How are you today? 
Hey, Luann, I am excellent. How are you? Good, good, good. Here we are bringing you another episode on window treatment conversation. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the, we're, the, the types of window treatments, like the categories of window treatments, right? Vita, tell us a little bit about what we are going to talk about today. Yes, so the topic today is the categories of window treatments. What do we mean by that? Um, I usually think of, I mean, there's a whole big world of custom window treatments, a whole big C, but I tend to sort of um, categorize things in my head and kind of put them in certain like like virtual shelves in my brain Mm -hmm. and so uh you know like an excel spreadsheet you put things into columns and into cells and and in lines and that's how my brain thinks (laughs) (laughs) so so the way my brain thinks of window treatments the way to simplify it is i break it down into two main categories so we'll be talking about those two and then within each category there are several types of window treatments. So we'll list those types. um, And I would love for you and I to kind of go back and share with our listeners what it is that we like about that particular type and what it is that we perhaps don't, like a pro and a con. And I don't think this is meant to be a 100% fully comprehensive list of everything there is out there, but it certainly is our go-tos, you know, things that we tend to gravitate towards and uh, immediate things that we like and don't like about something. Right, right. And so when we talk about these broad categories, these Excel spreadsheets, cell, little cells that you have divided into your brain, Vita. Yeah, mm-hmm. my brain does not work in Excel spreadsheets, by the way. <laughs> Shocker. so well together. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but when we talk about these, the overarching categories are basically hard treatments and soft treatments. And so this is probably not great news to most of us listening, but there, you know, within hard treatments and soft treatments, we do have subcategories. And we're, as you said, we're going to do the overview, but then in future episodes, we're going to go further into some of the complexities of hard treatments and then a separate episode into the complexities and the the things that we need to know about soft treatments. So when we talk about hard treatments, Vita, what do you, like, what's your personal take on them? What's your, what's your feeling on them overall as a category? So I usually think of hard treatments as, well, first of all, what do I, what's, uh, what's in them, what type of treatments? Those would be blinds, shades, and shutters. So, and the main purpose of hard treatments for me is usually functionality, meaning that, yes, they have some aesthetic appeal and they may look kind of pretty or kind of um you know, but their main purpose is to provide function. And that function, I usually think of either light control, privacy, or glare control. How about you, Luann? Is that how you usually think of um, hard treatments? Definitely. And also, I would add sometimes it the hard treatments are a factor of price. So if you're dealing mm-hmm. with a client, right, and you you need you, you know, it's, it's, it might just be the initial layer and the only layer that can be added. So sometimes, you know, when I think of a hard treatment, not that every hard treatment is in, is less expensive than a soft treatment by any stretch of the imagination. That's true. Right. So a shutter could be more expensive than a Roman shade, for example. Right. So that's an aversion of example of hard being more expensive than soft in some cases, but Generally, that's the other category. If I'm trying to do light control, I'm trying to do privacy, I'm trying to do glare control, or I'm trying to be budget-minded. That's very true. That's usually how I think of it as well. And even though there are some hard treatments, to your point, that could be equivalent to or even more than some of the soft treatments, usually kind of on average, in general, you think of blinds and shades as an entry point into the world of custom window treatments. Right. And even so, more to be more specific, it's that if you need something that's budget conscious, you're more likely to find it in a hard treatment is really what I'm trying to say is, whereas once you get into soft treatments, it's probably mid-level or higher on the ladder of expense, where Heart treatments can be from the the lowest level all the way to the highest level from an, from an expense standpoint, but you are going to find opportunities and options at the entry price point in hard treatments more likely. 
Right. And our second category being soft treatments, what do we mean by that? Those, of course, are the drapery panels, Roman shades, valances, um, cornices, things of that nature. And I usually think of those, uh, the purpose of those as aesthetic. Now, can they be functional? Of course they can. Can draperies traverse and close and open? Yes, they can. And so can Roman shades. But I think in general, they because they add softness to the room, because they bring the whole design together, they frame the room, they add the window, they add color and texture. Because of all of those characteristics and qualities, I think of soft treatments um, purpose primarily being the aesthetic. How about you, Luann? Is that how you look at it as well? Or? Absolutely agree, right? So it's a home run when they perform the function as well as the aesthetic beauty of the room, but sometimes and often they are considered and introduced specifically to do the job of making the room seem more complete or to adding, as you said, the color and the texture and the style and, and elevating the uh, design for the interior designer. It's a way to it's also a way to, you know, put your personal creativity on it. So the Roman shade that designer Sally Smith designs could be completely different than the Roman shade that, you know, Joe Blow designs for the exact same room with everything else being exactly the same in the room, right? It could be the same carpet, the same furniture, mm -hmm. the same wall covering, same accessories, same lighting. But the individual vision of the one designing the window treatment could bring a whole different feeling and idea to it. And the soft treatment is the way to bring that to its fullest expression. I really like that nuance, Luann. I never really thought of it that way, but I think what you just said is really brilliant. Um, whereas the same Roman shade can be two real distinct looks. A shutter is a shutter is a shutter. Right. There's really not a whole lot of different right. uh, design that you can do there. <laughs> That's the truth, right? So you really can put your personalization on it. And of course, we know anytime we put our personalization on something and we customize it to our exact vision, it becomes something that's less shoppable. Which is a great point, and I know that we mentioned um, it quite a bit in our very first episode. One of the amazing and definite reasons to get into the window treatments custom window treatments is because they're much less shoppable than a lot of other elements in the interior design world. Exactly, exactly. And that's, a, that's you know, that's exactly the point of it, right? You want to not only express your creativity and create the space for your client that is unique to them, and but you want to create an environment where you can do business and you can make money and you can be profitable with less headache and, and drama over it. <laughs> mm, serious. Yeah, yeah. Less drama. Let's take the WTF out of the WTF. <laughs> exactly so all right so now let's have a little conversation about um the there you have we have six categories here in hard treatment so we mentioned blinds roller shades cellular shades the silhouette shading group of treatments shutters and woven wood shades and let's run down a little bit of the pros and cons of some of each of these products vita get us started on that Sure. Let's start with blinds. Now, blinds in my world is usually the entry uh, point for to to bring customer into the world of custom window treatments. If they if they say I want something nice, I need privacy functionality, all of that stuff, but I am totally on the budget. This is usually where I would go. Mm. Um, now, I personally actually really like blinds. I have blinds all over my house, on the first floor particularly. I did that about six years ago, and that's when blinds were really, really popular. I think they still, now we're both you and I in the Northeast, so things probably differ all over the country. But over here, I think they still are pretty popular. What, what would you say? Do you do a lot of blinds in absolutely, your business? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100% agree. I feel like there's always a place for them. It's the bread and butter. It's the staple mm -hmm. product, right? And the same with us. Like we have our, at our shore house, it is ground level living. And so we, and we're close to the street and our street happens to be a really nice street that gets tons of water 
walking traffic. So, and, and our house is this cute little Cape Codish type of a, a house. And, you know, it's got cute awnings and all, you know, flowers and, you know, it's all really nice. And so honestly, Vita, I can't tell you the number of times I'm sitting at my quote unquote dining room table, which is our kitchen table, because it's a, like mm-hmm. I said, it's a bungalow. Mm-hmm. And people are literally br- women. It's usually women who are on a walk together will be walking and they will stop and literally just stare into the house and start pointing and pointing at the <laughs> roof and pointing at this. And it's a riot. Like it's bizarre. Oh and right. that, that's like not, not ridiculously not nice at all. Yeah. But I mean, and the thing is, I know that they're, you know, they're admiring things and they're, you know, sharing what, you know, whatever. But the thing is, I've got the blinds on this level and I can tilt the blind up just enough so that I can still see the greenery. I can still see the sunshine, but I'm not looking right at my quote unquote lady neighbors who are like (laughs) looking at the way I've decorated and designed the outside of our house. (laughs) That's pretty crazy. (laughs) So I love blinds in that case because if I had um, the the, the pro and what I'm describing that is if it were a Roman or a cellular shade or something, it's an up or down position. If they can't see me, I can't see out because it's all down or it's all up. And so I love the functionality of blinds. And, um, you know, here I am. I could have any window treatment I want. And that's what I wanted for there. You know, Mm -hmm. and I and I agree with you as far as the pro of blinds 100 100 percent that's exactly why i like them as well i barely ever lift them um to open but i definitely tilt them open close all the time and i have them in various sort of partially tilted in whether up or down um all all the yeah so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's definitely my pro as well now as far as the con what i don't like about the blinds is the cleaning yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> or the lack thereof <laughs> yes they are not very easy to clean i think mm-hmm. um if you know if, if you're if you're really really cleaning versus just like kind of wiping it down right for like a second um which you can do you can close it you can move the louvers down and you can do a big sort of big swoopy motion swiffer type of uh, cleaning mm-hmm. but if you were to do something a little bit more um what's the word you know just in in, depth in depth thank you yes (laughs) then you have to go into every single one between all the ladders and all those strings and all and everything else and uh that that would take a lot much longer right (laughs) it's more of a pain in the butt yeah it's true i mean that is that is probably the one big con of them i i I agree 100%. Absolutely. So, okay, next category is roller shades. And, um, you know, the thing about roller shades is, you know, Vita, like I know, I mean, my goodness, in the last three years, it's like somebody reinvented the roller shade, right? You you feel that too? That is exactly <laughs> how I feel. I mean, I swear to God, we did not compare notes on this. No. That's exactly how I feel. Three years ago, I mean, it's it's just like there was a rebirth yes. of roller shades. It's like somebody went out on, I don't know, on, on TV and made a big public announcement that roller shades are back in. And I know. So, I like, think the millennials just... think they invented them. I really think they do. Because, you know, think about it. Millennials didn't necessarily, of course, we're make, I'm going to make a generalization. But, you know, my millennials, my children didn't grow up with roller shades, right? My children grew up with wood blinds. They grew up with woven Mm -hmm. woods. They grew up with Roman shades. Um, They grew up with Verisol shades, okay? They grew up some in the early days of the millennials. My millennials that are 35 and 30 years old, they had, we had verticals then. Um, Mm -hmm. We did not do roller shades. So I think it's so funny because like three, four, five years ago, I start to get 30, 35 year old clients that are saying to me, I want roller shades. And I'm like, you want what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course now it's reached all the way to the highest levels of luxury design. Every luxury designer that we do window treatments for Vita, right, is specifying roller shades, motorized. And of course the vendors, the manufacturers in the industry over the last three years have exploded the options. You know, it, it looked like five years ago, if you could find a good looking roller shade, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to meet it. And You'd now, genius. Right, mm-hmm. right. It was your basic, you know, uh, 
um, cottons and, and vinyls and some solar screen materials, and that would have been the, the, the extent of it. And or really old fashioned, you know, Swiss dot and crazy stuff that we did 30 years ago, right? But um, now I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I forget you're not as old as me. <laughs> I, nor am I from this country, so I wasn't. I didn't grow up with any of these. Actually. That's right. Okay, That's a all whole right. Different episode. <laughs> That's right. I forget that. Right. So, but so yes, and so now there are. I mean, the books that I have from the vendors, from Hunter Douglas, from Horizon, from Lafayette on the roller shade product, they've got 300 samples in them now. It's crazy. And, and they're quite, they're quite beautiful, yes. you know, and they're, they're, some are more beautiful than others. They're handsome. They are uh, creative. They're different looking. I mean, there are some that are very high patterns, some that are very um, understated, but there's just so many varieties of them. Um, and of course, just the whole idea of them kind of the, the whole, I guess, engineering and the way the roller shade looks, the way it, it just kind of simply and sleekly comes down from the top of the window th- from the headrail and just kind of travels down the window. I think that's just the look that the aesthetic that is so prevalent for what are we? 2019. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And then the advances in the types of valence covers, fascias, cassettes, the bottom bar. There's, you know, it used to be that you placed an order for a roller shade. It was, you know, write three things and check off two boxes. Now it's <laughs> what kind of bottom bar, what kind of hem, what kind of this, what kind of control, what kind of valance, yes. what kind of fascia. So the options are out there. And of course, motorization, I think, has driven this tremendously. I think that's really, I'm blaming it on the millennials or attributing it to the millennials but i really do think motorization is one of the reasons why that this has happened also with the whole mid-century look that became so popular off of mad men several years ago and it just yeah. takes us a while to all catch up and have the things available that the different um, influences in our marketplace create so mad men really did create the recession created the minimalism and then mad men you know further you know brought in the mid-century aesthetic and roller shades are because that's it i grew up with roller shades in the 60s and 70s so then my kids missed it and now it's back again you know it's everything that's new is old everything that's old is new again is what the sentence is so So. does that mean that the uh swags and cascades are coming back oh gosh well understand you know you go through (laughs) the history and they were there right i mean honestly i i hope i'm done by then that's although i you know as soon as i said that it was so easy yeah i would love to do swags and cascades again i don't want to look at them anymore but i I don't mind selling them (laughs) exactly exactly and you know why just like the roller shades came back updated i bet you there's going to be something amazing and updated in the in the swag as well but anyway there has to be there has to be yeah so okay so now you got cellular shades what do you think about those cellular shades now luann the last time i sold a cellular shade i probably could not even tell you when that was really where I am, the cellular shades, even though we're not too far from each other, only probably about an hour and a half or so. Yeah, cellular shades in my area are no longer popular at all. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to I'm going to push you back on that. I I believe it's because you're to the trade only. Mm-hmm. I don't be. think it's the consumer that's not using it where you are because I would tell you that I might have five cellular shade orders a year from interior designers, which yeah. represents maybe oh, maybe three quarters of a million of our volume with interior designers, whereas mm-hmm. I have probably sold two or three hundred thousand dollars worth of cellular shade year to date in January, in 2019. Interesting. So and so in other that. words, you, um, in other words, you're saying that the interior designers are that much more advanced in their thinking and that much more progressive in their aesthetic. Well, look at you kissing right? up that... to them. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Just reiterating what you said. I'm taking the page from your book and making inferences. You're just that good of a teacher. <laughs> So what I think it is, is I think that I'm going to use Kim's word. Interior designers are allergic to cellular shades, okay? 
Um, look, he, we're going to, right here leads us into the con of cellular shades. The con of the cellular shades is they have become, to my way of thinking, I remember saying this 15 or 20 years ago, the cellular shade at that point had become the roller shade of the 60s or 70s. It had become the perfunctory, okay, if you just can't stretch your brains in any way to come up with anything more creative, let's put a cellular shade on the window, right? And um, also not even so in, to present it in such a negative way, but just that it is truly a functional product, right? It is truly a functional product. There's not a lot. You can't adorn it. There's not a lot you can do to it. You, can, you know, there's different textures involved and so forth like that. But mm -hmm. the thing is for me, you cannot escape the practicalness of it and the functions that it does provide. Um, and I have to say too, you know, I'm recently been um, on the I'm, I've, Comfortex, I've been a, an account holder of Comfortex for more than 30 years. But when I recently became aware of their Color Lux line, mm -hmm. and Vita, this is where they are digitally coloring their products. So cellular shades, roller shades. And what I love about what Color Lux and Comfortex are doing is, you know, you know, if you're going to sell, if uh, me, I have $200,000 in cellular shade orders in, mm -hmm. in six months, five months, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what, 90% of those, 90% of those are in white. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 8% are in off white. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and the other 2% are in some other color. And mm -hmm. so when they came up and told us about Color Lux a couple of years ago, I was like, whatever. I don't need 800 colors of cellular shades. Thanks. I'm, yeah. I'm fine with my daisy white. Right, right. Right. <laughs> daisy white. Yeah. Right. But what <laughs> I heard this last time when they came to the showroom and wanted me to hear it again, mm -hmm. the representative comfort text is Laurel Palmer, and she is a brilliant woman. She's a very passionate person. She's very dedicated to what she does and she's an excellent salesperson and I've said to her every time I've talked to her, if you ever leave Comfort Text, call me. <laughs> okay. Um, but Good people are right? hard to find. So you have to cultivate um, exactly, them early. Exactly. <laughs> and you just got to plant that seed, sweetie. Very you just smart, call yes. Luann when you want to leave. <laughs> I hear you. Right? But the thing about it is, is that she presented it to me in a way this time where she said, Listen, I recognize that by and by the largest part of your cellular shade sales are going to be in white and now in recent years probably a shade of gray. She said, but mm -hmm. how often have you not found the right shade of white? And I went, whoa. I mean, if I could ba have back all the minutes of my life, Vita, that I mm -hmm. have spent holding up Daisy White and Journal to uh -huh. a customer <laughs> right. and them saying, well, the white's a little too white and the journal's a little too gray. And me going, uh -huh. I know, still uh -huh. we have to pick one. You know, uh -huh. the white's uh -huh. a little too white, the journal's a little too off-white. I'm sorry, this is your paint, this is the sample, like we got to pick one, right? And so now, though, you can say to Comfortex, hey, I'd love to have my cellular shade in Benjamin Moore simply white, that uh -huh. exact white. And that has been a game changer for cellular shades. So that's really cool. So you've been that. using that program quite a bit then? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. It's awesome. Good for you. It's absolutely awesome. So that's my con. And then, of course, when we go into cellular shades, we have the whole um, bottom up, ta top down feature, light rise, uh, cordless operation, motorized, battery operated motorization, you know, all of that stuff. And then, of course, cellular shades. The other pros of cellular shades are the, the, the octagon windows and the round windows and the arch windows and all those crazy windows that builders put into houses that have no business being there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not in bedrooms and bathrooms. <laughs> Don't you love it when they put like an oval window in the water closet, like oh my right God. where you're peeing? Yeah, and you're just exactly. Like, oh my God, like really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you say to your your client, well, you can have this really old fashioned shirred sunburst thing, or you can have a cellular shade and the rest of your house has awesome Roman shades and draperies, but this is the only thing I can do here. Right. And yeah. so it's so like, you know, I, that's my big pet peeve with the windows that builders place in places that are just silly. Anyway, that's a whole nother topic, it actually. Is. So it those are my is. pros. I hear you. you I, know? I hear you on the cellular shades. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I think I mean, you know and, what? Go ahead. I, I'm not right. I'm, 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 
I, I don't want to um, de, de, um, not Denigrate, encourage someone, yeah. a, a designer, to use a cell, cellular shade if that's what she or he likes or if that's what the design project um, calls for. And there's certainly a lot of advantages to the cellular shades. So, you know, here we are just kind of, you know, bantering and uh, giving our own personal pros and cons and what we like and don't like. But the overarching goal of us doing that is to give you an overview of each one of those types and some of the pros and cons. And if you um, are intrigued by what, by what we have to say, then definitely do your own homework on each of the types and see what you personally think about it. Yeah. No. And, and the thing is, is that um, I get the con of it from particularly from the standpoint of the designer. I, I have if I have had dozens of designers over the years say before I put a white daisy white cellular shade here, I'll put a white linen Roman shade here. It's just it's a mm -hmm. more elevated look. There's no question. So anyway, moving yeah. along moving to silhouette along. shades. <laughs> Silhouette shades. Now, silhouette, we, we, we call them silhouettes, but there's probably a uh, different name, I would think, Luan. You, you, you tell me, you, you correct me. Uh, the silhouette is, is a name that Hunter Douglas uses for this types of, ty type of product. Um, this type of product is al also available through other vendors as well, um, and they call it something different. Essentially, what it is, it's an all-fabric combination of blind and a shade. And it means that it comes down on the window from the headrail. It travels down the window in a solid piece of material. So it covers the window from top to bottom if it's a regular lift system. But when it reaches the bottom, you can <clears throat> tilt the veins. So it has the veins. And when, you, um, when it reaches the bottom and you kind of turn it, then the veins tilt up. And so you can see through it much like a blind. So it's a combination of shade and blind. Right. What what makes it super, super attractive is that it's a, it's a treatment that is made of 100% fabric. So there is no wood, there is no faux wood, there is no paper, there is um, nothing else. It's just fabric. And it's it has a very light and airy and a really, really beautiful look to it. Yes. So that's my pro. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And the thing about it is, is the silhouette name is proprietary to Hunter Douglas. And the, tr the truth of it is, like for Comfortex, Comfortex it's Shangri-La. Um, the mm -hmm. truth of it is there are differences in every product. So the Shangri-La functionality and properties are not exactly the same as the Hunter Douglas because it's proprietary to them. And so, and some of the features, you know, when you go off to another brand outside of Hunter Douglas, some, you sometimes get features that are not found in the Hunter Douglas and maybe are, are more beneficial to you. A couple of things that I like about this, um, this product, this shadings category, is that in the down position, veins tilted open. So shade is down, veins are tilted open. You have a sheer layer on the front and the back that are holding that vein. So as Vita said, it's all fabric. So there's a sheer layer on the back, the vein is sideways in the middle, and then a sheer layer on the front. And what I like about this is that that sheer layer I'm not going to know off the top of my head this the exact percentage, but it's in the high 80s or low 90s, and it might even be higher than that, UV percentage blockage. So in the open position, sun shining in your room, enjoying beautiful daylight hours, being able to see completely through it with that shear there, you are still getting UV protection. And so that's a, that's a particularly nice feature of this product that it doesn't have to be closed in order to have UV protection. So for that reason, we often use them in, um, you know, living rooms, dining rooms, things where you've got carpets and furniture and hardwood floors and things that are going to get faded, but they're not rooms that you're coming in and opening and closing blinds, right? How much in your living room, like you said, you're blind, you open and close them, tilt them open and close, you don't lift them. But rooms that you don't use, you're not like walking in and going, let me open the shades, let me close the shades. And so the silhouette allows you to have the, essentially to walk by your, your unused rooms, um, mm -hmm. lesser used <clears throat> rooms, and always see out and always have daylight, but know that your interior um, 
furnishings are protected by UV. So that's what I like about that. So, you know, the con, should we say the big con of it? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Are we on the same page about I'm, it? I, we sure. didn't check, but I'll bet Let's, we are. Go ahead. Well, here, the big, uh, well, actually, I have two. So I'm going to do one, and maybe you can do the other. I don't know. Um, well, the, the big con for me, personally, is that over time, there's all sorts of um, – critters that yeah, get between the oh is it yeah <laughs> i thought you were gonna say price no <laughs> yeah so so after a while you know you go back to that customer maybe do another room or whatever and uh and you go back into that let's say living room and you look at it and you're like what is that black speck right in the middle and you come close and sure enough there's like a bug that somehow made its way between the veins couldn't get itself out of it and unfortunately just sort of passed away <laughs> inside and it's, it's just kind of resting there. it's the truth it's and brutal the inevitable question is how do i get this thing out of here right and yeah, yeah i usually just recommend the um the, the like the the um keyboard cleaner aerosol type thing right right or i tell them a blow dryer oh <laughs> oh you know what happened to me with the blow dryer i don't didn't tell me it melted the bud it melted the bug it, and made a stain ah the bug is okay. It melted the silhouette. Oh, whoa. Yes. Oh, so, okay, ladies Luan, and gentlemen, learn something you, right here. <laughs> if you decide to use a, right, a hair dryer, blow dryer, then make sure you have it on the cold setting because if it's on the hot, it's going to melt the thing. Interesting. You know, I, that's news information. That's new information <laughs> for me. Whoa. I wonder if anybody has melted shades because I was stupid. Story. Ay, ay, ay. No, okay. you could have gotten cold. Yes, you're right. I would have. My well, plan. That's what right. And I'd be like, well, let me just get you a brand new one because that's on me. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So yeah, we have the same uh, con on silhouette shades. And so, and then the other con is quite frankly, they have a large head rail. And so I feel like that's sometimes an obstacle, but you know, whatever, you know, you got to get over things sometimes, right? All right. How about shutters? We have shutters and hard treatments. We have pros and cons with shutters. What do you want to say about that? Shutters, 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 shutters. You know, I've learned that there are some people um, that love shutters and some people just don't care for them at all. It's just sort of like a love-hate relationship. And a lot of times in my experience, if people want shutters, they practically want them all over their house. And that's oftentimes, again, just my experience, that's all they want. They like that it's a very clean look. It's a very architectural look. It just kind of becomes part of your, it's kind of like if you think of crown molding or if you think of built-ins, shutters become part of that type of aesthetic in your house. And the clients that, uh, just in my experience that I've worked with, that's what they want. And they want, very rarely do they want anything else. They're not necessarily soft treatment type of people anymore. They just want their shutters and right. that's all. A hundred percent. How about agree. you? Yes. It's oh, yeah? True. Oh, good. It's mm -hmm. so true. I mean, you always have the situation where you do a, a specific room and shutters, but it does happen more often than not that the client who likes a shutter will just say run through the whole house with shutters. And, and, and I love it too. I think it's a very clean look. You know, look, there's the cons of shutters are that um, it is going to, you, you know, you're not ever really going to put a shutter in the open position so much, especially when you're into the wider plantation style shutters two and a half, three and a half, four and a half inch louvers, right? Because the door is swinging. You usually have much bigger doors. The goal is usually to have the least amount of doors across the window as possible, which mm -hmm. gives a cleaner, more open look in the closed position. But then that means that you have these big doors in the open position. And so they're, they, they're awkward. And so the thing is, is if somebody is like, I like to get up in the morning and have full on light, well then mm -hmm. probably a shutter isn't a great solution. You know what I mean? Not that you can never open your shutter that, you know, there's no, not, there's no always and nevers, but mm -hmm. mostly when I'm working with somebody that is considering shutters, I'm asking them, that's one of the first questions I'm asking. Do you intend to open this up and have this shutter open during the day? Or are you feeling like you're going to get up in the morning, whether you're coming into the living room or you're in your kitchen or whatever, and tilt the shutter open and not open the door? And if they're like, oh, no, I want to open it every day, then we got to start to look around. Well, if, if it's on the night table, if, if the window is behind the night table, 
right? Well, uh-huh. can you open that shutter during the day? Because is it going to hit the lamp that's sitting on the night table? Yep, or like behind a sofa in the living room. Right. You or can't, family room. Yes, mm-hmm. you can. And so does that mean we won't sell it? Because no, because then what happens is we say, look, if you're okay with leaving this closed every day and just tilting louvers open and close, and in twice a year when you want to clean your windows, yes, you're going to move the sofa away so that you can open the shutter door so you can get to the windows. Or you're going to move you know, the lamp and put it on the floor so that you can swing that door by the nightstand. But this is the thing. It's the, the pro of it is the the sleekness, the, the the uniformity of it, the, the the almost like a California type aesthetic, right? Um, mm-hmm. And but the con is to be aware that they're not really a, a functional product in the open and close up, you know, every single day. They're not, they're not meant for that. They're just not. Agree, agree a hundred percent. And then the last type of treatment within this hard goods category, um, and I, these are not in any kind of order, by the way. This is just kind of what what we have them down as. Um, and the last one would be a woven wood shade. Um, and another word for it is a matchstick shade. Oftentimes, I'm getting um, asked, like, do you, do you do matchsticks? I'm like, what? At first, I was like, what's a matchstick? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, but uh, how, do you do a lot of this? Those, Luann, yes. in your business? Yes, we do. And and designers love woven wood shades. Absolutely. This is, is primarily th- down the shore or No, no. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. We do, we do everywhere. Manhattan, Jersey, everywhere. Um, the thing about it is is that you have you have your um, entry level category in in woven woods which you can get from horizons and lafayette and and vendors like that but then you have hartman and forbes you know where you are getting a whole nother level of quality and a whole nother um level of uh, selection and so you know yes do i sell tens of thousands of dollars a year of the other brands and the other levels. Absolutely. But what I find is that the designer client is um, very happy and very comfortable and very often will specify the Hartman and Forbes product for their products. And the thing is, you have custom made to weave and Hartman and Forbes also has a cut to measure. So those terms are a little deceiving uh, in the sense that cut to measure sounds like, I don't know, sounds like bottom basement, but it's not. It's just, <laughs> it's not. It's, it just means that custom made to weave means that I can, you know, you can, we can do almost anything. You know, we, there's tons of patterns and styles and sizes and everything, but cut to measure means maybe this pattern that we're looking at is only going to be available in shades up to 70 inches wide or 96 inches wide or a hundred inches wide. And you know, that's 85% of the windows that we're going to measure by the way. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. but if are you not familiar with Hartman and Forbes, Vita? Oh, very, very, very oh, okay. much so. Yeah. Um, Hart- very Forbes, high end, right? Very high end. Another, another uh, very comparable vendor is Conrad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I've done their shades, um, and there is another one that um, one of my designers, um, Nancy Gracia from the Bear Rue Design Studio. She she actually recently introduced me to uh, Presidio Classics. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so that's another one that you, you may want to put on your radar as well. And they're also those, uh, they're primarily uh, woven to a specific size mm-hmm. kind of shade. Right. And mm-hmm. you also have Very Grace Ritchie. You have, have you heard of Grace Ritchie? Have not. Yeah. Right. Grace Ritchie mm-hmm. is another good company for that. And so, um, you know, and so these, and these are the, the patterns and the colors and the weaves are very elevated is the only way I could describe. Very elegant is the way, not just, um, not the, the, in other words, you have your, some of the, th- the, some of the, the cons of the woven woods at the entry level point, not the luxury level point, are that the colorways are limited and a lot of the weaves can be either very simple or overly texturized. And that's what I love about the elevated and the more luxury levels of the woven wood products that you have a lot more opportunity across different colors for, you know, 
more flat looking patterns all the way to the textured patterns. So, yeah, I think ele elevated is a really um, good way of describing it. Although I, I fear that the listeners probably don't, they want to like, what does that mean? Like, what does it look like? You know, and I don't think the words can quite describe no. what elevated really means. Um, and so anybody who is interested, I would really encourage them to either meet with their rep or even just to go on their website and order a few samples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even just by looking at those few samples, which would represent like one or two percent of their entire collection, less probably, um, they, you guys would really understand what both Luann and I mean here by, by more sophisticated and more elevated look and feel and style. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Hartman and Forbes was one of the sponsors at Luann and I got live back in March. And oh, cool. yeah. And, and one of the things that I shared with interior designers is this is a expensive product. This is not a mini blind or a wood blind. There's a lot of workmanship and quality and craftsmanship that goes into creating a woven shade at this level and you don't necessarily and your business model may not be that you want to be the one to place the order. So for us, we have, you know, we take that responsibility. We take, you know, Vita and I, we take that responsibility for placing, you know, making the measurements, placing the order, doing all the technical stuff. And um, it's not a mistake in this realm is, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And so you're, a, you certainly are free to open up an account, but the model is set up that you should access it through somebody like one of us and, and whoever that might be in your area. And you could always call the companies and ask them, is there a window treatment professional in my area that I can access your product through? Because I don't want this responsibility. To me, I, I say to the designers that work with me, it's sort of like tiling. You, you're going to design the tile. You're going to put it all together, but you're not going to get down on your hands and knees and, you know, do this. It's, you're going to leave that to somebody who does it seven days a week, right? And so mm -hmm. it's the same thing. But um, it's a great product category, and they mix fantastic with drapery panels and, and all of the other stuff. So fun. Should we move on to even more fun oh, topic, like yeah. soft treatments? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the, the types of treatments that we have here in the soft category are drapery panels, Roman shades, valances, and cornices. Um, and you know, as I'm saying this, it, it, I'm realizing that, and you tell me if, if you're hearing the say, this the same way as I am, it just sounds very simplistic. You know, I feel like we've just <laughs> taken a whole huge... Uh, industry of custom window treatments and we said well look at it as two categories kind of like take a sheet of paper and divide it into two columns and one is soft and the other one's hard and then on the left hand side say so you have hard and you have six categories boom 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 and here on the right you have four I should say types within category and then on the right within the soft category you have four types boom 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 and it's kind of like I almost even though I know you guys I mean there's other types and we certainly are simplifying this, I would take appreciation the fact that we are trying to make it very understandable and in a way that you can really um, com compartmentalize this big world of window treatments sort of in your brain, in your head, and maybe start thinking of it as not so overwhelming and not so like, oh my gosh, there's so much to know and there's so much to do and there's just so many options. And part of it, yes, it's very true, but there's also another part where you can know just enough to have the intelligent conversation. And I think our trying to maybe oversimplify things right now within this particular conversation can do just that for you, encourage you to start that conversation with your next client. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Because this is like the process of doing a design project. So we have four types of soft treatments in the category, but each of those types, drapery panels, has 
you know, 20 subtypes, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the process of your design uh, project. You know, you have trade day. That's one step in your design process, but how many things go into actually executing trade day? So it's funny because these four categories, drapery panels, Roman shades, valance, and some cornices, represent about 95 pages in my reference guide. (laughs) You know, it's like, okay, there's 1,900 types of Roman shades and there's, you know, 22,000 types of drapery panels. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so tell me, what do you like about drapery panels? I, I like that they're a very simple, straightforward way to just dress up a space, to dress up a room, to add a little color, add a little texture, add a little, um, you know, extra uh. You know, it's like putting the jewelry on, right? It's just like, okay, yes. we've got a great black dress, but it needs a little something. And so mm-hmm. we've got a beautiful room, um, but we, we still want a, a simple, more simplified look. We don't want to overly be um, crazy. And the thing also I like about draperies is they can just be a simple look. They can just be a minimal addition to a space to make it nicer without feeling heavy and overly done. But we all know we can sure do things to them to make them really heavy and overdone and elegant and crazy. So it's <laughs> they're just so versatile, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That's exactly why I personally like them as well. I mean, I think we can take a very simple and streamlined approach. You know, you have a window, you have one width of a material on each, a simple little panel, four cute little pleats, very simple hardware at the top, ba ba boom and you're done, and that's it. Um, or you can do multiple widths. You can adorn it with trim, or you can select a fancier hardware. Um, also, with drapery panels, they can be functional, right? So you can clo- open and close them on the window. You can make the window wider than, than make it look wider than it really is by clearing it with the drape far enough so it looks a lot wider than it is. There's just, there's a lot of functions essentially that a, a drapery panel can provide from the aesthetic standpoint. Exactly. I love it. I love it. All righty. Roman shades. Roman shades. Roman shades. Do you do a lot of Roman shades, Luann? Oh, my goodness. A gabillion. <laughs> <laughs> After drapery panels nowadays, that's like my next biggest category. Yes, absolutely. You do a ton of Roman shades. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I wonder, I, th- I almost wonder if we do more Roman shades than we do drapery panels, I have to oh, say. Oh, interesting. Yeah. No, for us, it's definitely, I mean, drapery panels... Oof, you know what? I should do that analysis, but if I were to guess, I I mean like 60 to 70% of my soft treat, treatment business. Mm. Yeah. No, I would I don't know the percentage, but I would say that it's at minimum it's 50-50 between drapes and romans, you know, the the overall mix. But, you know, because romans like I said, so many of the interior designers uh will prefer a Roman over even a silhouette or definitely a cellular shade or, um, you know, a woven wood product. They like the idea. We all like the idea, the flexibility of being able to have the exact type of fabric that we want at that window to make, because the Roman is the functional part, right? The Roman, if Mm -hmm. your drapery is the, is this on the side, you know, and it's the decoration, the Roman is the thing that you lower down with black outlining to make the room dark or it's the thing that you lower down with light filtering lining to just diffuse the light in a kitchen, but take the glare off you while you're watching, you know, sitting there at the table eating or whatever it might be. And you can adorn it in any way you want from a simple uh, trim across the bro- bottom to trim on three sides to whatever the heck you want to do. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, almost anything. You can motorize them, hand uh, clutch control, cord lock control, cordless control. Cordless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, they're very, 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 very versatile and um, not inexpensive. They're labor intensive to make. Very labor intensive. Correct. I know. I know just from doing um, not so much as time studies, but just noticing and keeping track of how much time something 
takes in our workroom, I am no, you know, I am seeing that Roman shades are very, very, very labor intensive. By the time you sew on all those rings in the back, and they have to be hand sewn, there's no other way. Right. At least I haven't found another way to do it. No. Um, it does take a long time. I'll tell you one of my um, pet peeves with Roman shades, okay. Lan. Okay. So, <laughs> so <laughs> like, bring it on. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when you raise it. When you raise a Roman shade, mm. it hard and, until that fabric is fully trained. Mm -hmm. It is most often than not that the sides mm -hmm. of it get all kind of like jumbled up and crumpled up and they just never behave perfectly straight and folding perfectly on top of each other the way they should be. And so whenever I'm doing a Roman shade for a client or a designer, I always tell them that um, until that fabric really knows how to behave and that only happens after it's been doing it for a long time, much like a child, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, then you're going to have to kind of fiddle with it and you have to adjust. And are you okay with that? That's a great point to bring up because it is the truth. We do have to make sure that we explain that to our end consumer user each time we sell a Roman shade to them. You know, certainly we have Roman shades, the hobbled Roman and Romans with the dowels in it, but they're not popular anymore. Let's be serious, at least not on the coasts, right? So maybe middle yeah, America, yeah. they're popular. I'm not sure, but I know East and West Coast, we are not using hobbled and we are not using uh, flat stitched Romans with the dowel. And that means the flat Roman shade has absolutely, there's nothing there to make it go in its fold except those rings. And the rings are placed, you know, across it, not in a, you know, little line of soldiers, but eight, 10 inches apart, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so you do have to dress it every single time you move it up and down. And to your point, it's not one or two weeks before that fabric gets trained. <laughs> it, it could be going on a year, depending on how often you put it up, because that's the other thing. I've had, you know, situations where people like, I've had this thing for six months and it still does it. And I said, well, how often do you put it up? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, on, you know, Sundays, I usually sit in this room, so I put it up. Well, that's not going to work, sweetie. We can't put <laughs> it up one day a week and think it's going to get trained. And so it's, it is a, a challenge with Roman shades but it does not impede their popularity one bit. It does not. Nope. I completely agree. I nope. agree. Nope. On to valances. Yep. So the valances, as we have alluded to earlier in this episode, um, I hardly ever do anything with swags, cascades, balloons, Londons, you know, any of that frou-frou stuff, unfortunately. On the coast, on the, in the Northeast where we are, I, we, unfortunately, I think it's unfortunate because there's a lot of money in it, <laughs> <laughs> um, has gone, you know, kind of by the wayside and it sounds like it has for you as well, Luann. Yes. Yeah, no, I, the thing is that what, look, like I said earlier, I wouldn't want to look at a swag anymore in my own house. I would like to choke. I'd be, I can't breathe with that thing hanging there. <laughs> However, that's a personal opinion, by the way. I, you know, by the way, there's places where it's completely appropriate and also popular still. Okay. However, um, I do miss it from an absolute practical standpoint as a window treatment professional because they are so much more flexible in taking a bay window and taking, um, being able to marry windows of different sizes, being able to marry windows of different heights. You know, I, it just w saw the myriad of problems so much easier just from a strictly practical make Luann's life easier standpoint. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, what styles have you been doing then? Something more streamlined, sleeker, yeah. straighter? I mean, mm -hmm. if you, if you, if you want to balance now, at least again, let's, you know, really qualify for the coast. Um, it's, it's either going to be a cornice or a kick pleat balance of some sort, or even a mock Roman, that, a Roman shade that doesn't operate, that just has, looks like has two or three folds at the bottom of it, and it looks like it's a Roman shade that's been pulled up, but it's actually functioning as a valance. And um, it's, it's, it's challenging, because not everybody wants just those three things, but at least in our area where we are, most people do want something on the more simplified, clean, a 
aesthetic. And therefore, it's you're not introducing a balloon shade or a swag to somebody who's looking for something clean. And there's mm-hmm. not a lot of options that you can really do. And so that's why I do also think that the drapery panels are so popular because the the clean is just the drapery rod at the top. And that's sort of the quote unquote header piece of the window is the drapery rod, which is mm-hmm. very minimal and clean, right? Obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, in my personal opinion, if I could do drapery panels every day, all day, I would do them. I yeah. really would. I just think they they treat the window kind of as a whole in its totality. Like you said, the rod goes all the way at the top and the panels come down on the side. So it's the whole, it's kind of like a very wholesome approach mm-hmm. to a window mm-hmm. and to, um, making it more special and to elevating the eye and just elevating the whole aesthetic. Whereas the other soft treatments, I mean, they definitely, definitely have place. Again, this is my personal opinion um, in, in the world of design and um, room decorating, but it's almost like, it's almost like you just put the mascara, but not the lipstick. Right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, it just, it never, you know, so, I mean, am I, I, I would love to do drapery panels of everything that we discussed today, <laughs> Vita's favorite are drapery panels. How about you? What's your overall favorite? <laughs> yeah, I would say too, just because, you know, I get very practical. So yes, I do know that they're going to be very nice at the window and they're going to do exactly what we needed to do. But, you know, I am, you know, I'm looking for it to be easy for me. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it, it answers the needs. It really, a drapery panel does answer most needs. Now, look, we have windows where you can't go to the floor. And do I want to see short draperies? No, ma'am, I do not. No way. I do not want to see short draperies, in which case let's, go, let's talk about Roman shades or some sort of a blind combination with a valance or something like that. But, um, yeah, no, I love the versatility of the drapery. I, like I said before, it can, be, it can dress a room up all the way to the nines. It can simply just mm-hmm. finish off a... Um, a lesser what's the word not formal but lesser designed room it can just finish that room off um mm-hmm. when I, I say casual that's the word i mean a casual <laughs> room even a casual room can benefit from a drapery and that's what i love about agreed them. yeah agreed mm-hmm. agreed 100 percent. yeah and so um i i think i think that's where it concludes our list so we'll start there uh, <laughs> for now. Again, not meant to be comprehensive, not meant to be 100%, you know, be all kind of, you know, thing. But um, think of all of your window treatments as two separate categories. One is hard, one is soft. Within the hard categories category, there is... Um, let's say six or so window treatment types, which we went over within the soft category, there is four or so types of treatments, which we went over. And so which one do you use? You have to, you know, this is where the design vision comes in, right? And that's why you guys are the designers and you and I are not, right? I would never want to be. (laughs) Um, You know, it's just let it, remember what the goal of the project is, whether it's functionality, aesthetic, is it combination of the two? Um, And based on your design vision, that's the type of treatment that you want to pick. But for the time being, let this list and everything we talked about be the framework which you can use then to fit in what you're doing. Exactly. Before we go, I want to say that in addition to the eight-week course Vita and I are running, which you can learn about at ProfitWithWindowTreatments.com, if you are looking for more information on window treatments, here's the resources that we recommend. First of all, you have the WCAA, the Window Coverings Association of America. Number one, I want to tell you, as an interior designer, what I feel is the number one reason to join the WCAA. It's not expensive to join, okay? A couple of hundred dollars. I don't know exactly um, what, what it is, but here's what I love about what the WCAA offers you as an interior designer. Maybe you don't have any desire to be expert at window treatments. Maybe you have no desire to actually learn the intricacies and the details that are required of Vita and myself in order to execute window treatments for you. For you. But guess who you meet at the WCAA? Hello, you meet people like me and Vita. <laughs> this is where we're hanging out. And so if you are saying to yourself, 
Yes, I'm convinced. I want to add window treatment services to my product offering. I want to make lots of money and profit on window treatments, but how do I know who to work with, who I can get along with, who I can trust, who I can rely on? Well, if you're a member of the WCAA in your local chapter, you can go there every month getting to know people, and then you can pick the one that feels like a right fit for you. You might decide that you want to work directly with a workroom. You might decide that you want to work with a, with a setup like mine where I'm not the workroom but I handle all of the concierge services for you but the point is this is where we're hanging out so that's a good resource then you have exciting windows which is really a mastermind for window treatment professionals this is a place where you can get together every month via a um, phone call meeting a conference meeting and twice a year at conferences and you are going to find people that are if this is for if you're a window treatment professional okay so not so much for interior designers but for my window treatment buddies out there so if you are doing two hundred thousand dollars a year in gross sales or you do or you are doing ten million dollars a year in gross sales we have members that are at every level of this and it is what I love about exciting windows is when I want to conquer the next level in my business or the next next aspect of my window treatment business there's somebody there that's been through it all ready and is happy, willing, and just dying to share with me their experiences so I can cut the, the um, learning curve down. And then the other thing is let's not forget Window Fashion Vision Magazine. And this is a resource comes out every other month. You have I'm a columnist in this magazine. Every every time it comes out, you have other professionals that are doing. So I'm writing on business. You have people that are writing on window treatments. You have people that are writing on the workroom aspects. You have um, your industry partners that are all advertising in this magazine, and that's how you learn about a lot of resources and products and things that you might not be aware of. And and I'm going to tell you this: Window Fashion Vision magazine is very interested in highlighting your work as an interior designer, particularly, let's say, specifically when you are doing something really terrific with a window treatment. So, you know, you submit your your photos and you say, this is a room that I've designed and it's got these amazing window treatments in it. And they're looking for content like that. So, um, and it's a free subscription if you're in the trade, if you're in the industry. So as an interior designer, you can get a free subscription and you can do that by going to subnow.com slash Luann. Sub S U B N O W dot com slash Luann. All right. And then finally we have the International Window Covering Expo, which is run by the Window Fashion Vision Magazine crew. And that year this year that expo is going to be in Charlotte. It's going to be in March twenty twenty. Both Vita and I are going to be there. And you've got Madeline McCrae there. My husband Vin is going to be there. We've got um, you know, tons of Deb Bartlett is usually there. Um um, you just have tons and tons. Jana Phipps, the trim queen, is usually there giving presentations. You have tons and tons of resources and speakers that are all there helping you as the interior designer to learn more about the window treatment industry and, of course, you as the window treatment professional to consistently and always up your game in what you're doing. And that is... <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I mean, Yikes. I'm listening to it and I'm like, all these resources, there's just no reason that um that designers uh should know what they should know. <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly, exactly. If you want help, we got help for you. That's the right, point, exactly. right? Not the least of which, Vita, is our new course that you will be leading. I am so psyched for this most of all. Based on the request for this, I know it's going to be fantastic. And I cannot think of a more qualified person to lead this course than you. Thanks, Luann. Well, thank you, too, to you, Vita. And thank you, too, to you, too, for listening. Please do something today to grow your business, to make more money for yourself and for your family, and to do the things that you deserve to do. Decide to be excellent.
Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.